Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Nikita from BSP Solution. In this session, we are going to take a look at the common workforce management component used in a time and labor. So we will describe worker and manager time entry option and go um, do a high level overview of manager tasks in the time management work area. So workforce management is a header for a business process that houses several applications, including time and labor and absence management. It encompasses common architecture, core component and application used to manage a worker's time related information. Consider time and labor typically as a time worked and absent management as a time away from the work. So it can be a cure time you have earned or a floating holiday or a sabbatical. And it could be a qualifying event like a birth or adoption or a number of other reasons. So what you are seeing in this graphic in the upper layer are two applications that can be shared data. And we will go a little further into the metadata lower layer. Okay. So you will see here the bullets represent the lower layer that we just saw in the previous slide, right? So time repositories store all time related information centrally. So that can be reported time, calculated time and regardless of where or how it's entered, update or maintained. It's all houses in our time repository and it's not only accessed by time and labor and absence management, but also by the payroll. So, which uses the calculate time as input for parents and also integrate with the absence management to update balances on the leave plans. But we don't navigate to a time repository because it's a part of the architecture. What we see in the data that's stored in the common time repository when we pull up certain pages that shows us leave balances or time entered for examples. So, which you will see in the system. Let's talk about the time repository. So I wanted you to be looking at this diagram as we are talking more about the time repository because it really is a graphic representation of workers' business processes that we spoke of when we covered workforce management initially. Right? And I will just point out the parts of so we can follow the diagram. And here you can see at the um, bottom in the green box down here, can see that is the green box okay so uh, you see all of the setup that ties to our worker so that they can enter their time and once this time is approved it's under uh, uh, sorry end up in the upper box here you will see the wfm repository up here and that's represent workforce management repository which is our time repository and on the left here the data sources you will see that can be have external sources that we incorporate into our time repository like calendar entries or schedule and um, uh, external time data right here you can see all of these so come back into the center again here you will see that we have two blue boxes here right and ones represent time entered here ones represent the time card and time entries here and uh, so that's uh, the reported time layer and uh, then the second one represent calculated time which is calculated based on the rules that you are going to set up and what denotes that is the approval rules showing below here you can see that approvals rule okay so then look at uh, how those two uh, blue boxes sit right on the top of the absence layer which encompasses everything because we can share data and metadata between those two products. So that's of a time repository. It holds all of that information. And what do we do with that information, right? So two places here you can see the HCM extract here. 
you can see that so if you had a third party payroll vendor that you may want to do a payroll interface so you would use the hcm extract process that is actually a common process for another application as well as within the hcm and you can pull out the data and push it to your third party vendor the second transfer time transfer the time uh, consumers so uh, when we calculate our time based on those entries uh, who consumes our output, the time and labor will output a set of data and say, here, I calculate your time. And then it can go three places, right? Then within our HCM product, there is a Fusion Global Payroll. Here you can see that it can also go to the project costing uh, just below the global payroll here. And project execution for project costing and for tracking labor hours that are going towards project. So within this whole framework in the graphic is our workforce management business process. So this is all about the time repository. Moving ahead to the data dictionary. So here is another shared component is the data dictionary which contains metadata that's used for storing and processing the time and labor but not only the time and labor but all of hcm application use elements from the data dictionary so what is the metadata briefly metadata is the definition of what and how our application will support use process and store the data it's everything about our data that is in data for example, metadata determines if our field is formatted for a date or if it's journal text, where what you see is what you get. So it defines what information will go into a certain fields and where the data is physically located in the repository. As user populate fields with values, while behind scenes, metadata validate what we are putting in formats to configure setup and then store the data where it's supposed to go once it's saved. So looking at fields on a higher page, for example, it's metadata that dictates that the address fields are alphanumeric while the higher date fields only accept numbers. So if our HR representative enters letter into the data field, they will get an error message, right? Which is also a metadata at work. A key thing to know about the HCM data dictionary is that it comes delivered with a large repository of data elements, but not every organization in the same and will likely need additional elements, particular to how each organization enters and track time. So creating custom time attribute is one of the first component in time and labor set up to create all of the attribute that your time labor users and managers require. So once the custom time attribute are created, the data dictionary stored these value along with the other delivered values. And it will need to be updated with the process that also comes delivered with the product. Let's talk about the data uh, dictionary setup task. So now how do custom data dictionary values or our custom time attribute get created for time card fields? We'll show you the component letter, but you uh, might be thinking, well, what is the time attribute anyway? So, and why might we need them, right? So think of time attribute as time categories or types of time that workers could enter like shift differential or holiday work we have some delivered in the data dictionary and we have a custom time attribute component where you can set up time attribute specific to your implementation part of your requirements gathering will include identifying custom time attribute for how workers are going to enter their time and another consideration during planning is to determine if absences type are to be reported on a time card and what payroll time attributes you are going to need in additional to what delivered in the data dictionary. It's not a 9 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday, but, uh, world for everyone, right? So the capability to create your time attributes is delivered. You can enter your own 
and after you do you run the generate data dictionary process which you can see here after you set up your custom attribute so the data dictionary is updated if you have more of that crop up after your initial setup you can run the generate data dictionary process again to update the data dictionary and if you can't remember when you last ran the process and something you created is not uh, it's not showing up there so you run the generate data dictionary process okay so finish out the list of common component that you saw earlier we are back on the slide to take a look at the last piece shared user interface and we shared calendars because calendar are a common basis for not only time and labor and absence management but also for the payroll and anyone else who uses calendar right so then we also share time cards if you want absence management entry to be uh, made on the same time card where time and labor entries are made and we share repeating time period so that they can stay in sync then your next great question might be well what are the repeating time period right so all right repeating time periods are a period of time where you define the number of days and they repeat as the same says but you don't have to concern about generating them because a workforce management application will automatically generate them for you and if you look at the um, button it will tell you it's 10 year before and 10 year after the current date okay so you are not going to run short and whatever we use uh, them for in the middle pieces we use repeating time period for our time card so your typically weekly time card periods may be seven days but some places that uh, they are sunday through saturday uh, in the sum when we go uh, in a little bit you are going to see that the work period there goes from monday to sunday you define them the way your organization work and then we will put them to use in our time and labor or absence management application and this is where having the common definition that shared between the application help sync up your process so that we are reporting and occurring time off within the same period okay and it makes it easier to sync up with payroll for example so if we have a bi-weekly time card that process with a bi-weekly pay period that also process with the same bi-weekly absence management period then everything lines up once you determine what your time card period is for how often you want the time card submitted then that controls your approval period and then your absence accrual period is a time interval in which worker accrue time like vacation okay and then the overtime period is typically used if the overtime period evaluation is different from the time card period like you might have a bi-weekly 14 day time card but we need to evaluate your overtime over seven days or you might have a monthly time card but over time is not still evaluated over seven days and balances period are used to maintain balances like in leave plan often you might see references to so many days per year so many week per year and once you have defined them you don't really have to do much with them because they generated themselves so this is about the workforce management component and how we can use a workforce management component in the time and labor so thank you so much for watching the video i hope this topic is clear to you